This is Nine News Now. The man once called the most trusted person in America has passed away. Walter Cronkite died at his home in New York at age 92 with his family around him. Cronkite had been ill for some time. Walter Cronkite was a giant in an age of giants in the news business. And throughout some of the most turbulent times in our history, Americans looked to Walter Cronkite to sort it all out. Tonight, Americans look back and remember. This is Walter Cronkite. Our interview with the senator will be entirely unrehearsed. Oh, I'm glad to see you. Well, it's good to be with you. Tension is mounting here at Cape Canaveral. His is perhaps the most recognized voice in all of television journalism. The historic community of Princess Anne, Maryland, became a racial battleground today, and snarling police dogs were one of the weapons. He was born in St. Joseph, Missouri, an only child, but he did most of his growing up in Texas. <laughs> Cronkite said he wasn't much of a student, but that was before he got his first taste of the news business. He was just six, delivering newspapers. I remember when President Harding died, and I, I couldn't wait to tell somebody else. I rushed down the street with a copy of the paper to my friend Albert Darling. Cronkite was also fascinated with a magazine that took him into the world of fighter pilots, bootleggers, and journalists. The, the one piece that hit me was a foreign correspondent. Boy, that guy with that... He was in that trench coat, and he was in there, and the bullets were flying, you know. It was, a, it was, a, that's what I wanted to be. Cronkite was there when the Allies landed in North Africa, and when America landed on the moon. When that vehicle landed on the moon, I was speechless. He was in the Soviet Union for the outbreak of the Cold War, and in Vietnam when that war started to fall apart. And now... Three weeks after the offensive began, the firing still goes on. According to our CBS News estimate, President Nixon has been re-elected. And he's met all of America's presidents since Herbert Hoover and recalls the day when politicians weren't all that polished. As a matter of fact, CBS, we had a we had a afternoon classes for, uh, for politicians in Washington, right up there at WTOP, uh, and uh, I conducted these classes in how how to perform for television. Simple things like don't lean on your, don't lean on your knees, you know, or don't, don't, lean, or don't, don't lean on your elbows on the table, sit up straight in the chair, you know, smile occasionally, <laughs> that sort of thing. Cronkite retired from the anchor desk in 1981, and years later, he said that was too soon. There wasn't a day he didn't regret his decision. Supreme Court today legalized abortion. A flurry of activity at the Jack Ruby trial we'll today. We'll try to suggest at least. And that's the way it will be. One of Cronkite's most memorable interviews was with John F. Kennedy when Kennedy was a candidate for president. Here he reflects on the interview and its meaning. I uh, liked Kennedy. Is nearly everybody did. One of the candidates for the office of the presidency. But I felt at the same ago, time there was a kind of an arrogance there that bothered me a great deal. In that 1960 election, I wanted to do separate broadcasts interviewing Especially Kennedy and Nixon. With a record of Richard Milhouse Nixon. <laughs> Nixon went first. We cannot uh, have peace at any price. Well, the following Sunday, we did Kennedy. Our interview with the senator will be entirely unrehearsed. Well, I'm glad to see you. And I asked him, what do you think are your special qualifications to make you available for the presidency? And uh, he flubbed it. Well, I think I've uh, had a, a, a historical view of the, the United States. He knew he'd flubbed it. And he kept insisting that we tape the interview over again. Well, I was really sore. I turned and I got halfway out of the room and I looked back at him and said, we'll do it again, Senator. But I want to tell you something. I think this is the lousiest bit of sportsmanship I've ever seen in my life. By the time I got to the door, he shouted, hey, wait a minute. Go ahead and run it. And we did. <laughs> Cronkite was in tears the day he reported about President Kennedy's death. Every anchor has a fill-in, and Walter Cronkite was no different from any of us. Roger Mudd, though, was Cronkite's substitute anchor for years, 
and has his own memories of the man affectionately known as Uncle Walter. Digital correspondent Jimmy Ratzel Silman spoke with him tonight. For most TV viewers, he was, uh, he was reassuring, he was comfortable, and when you listened to him, you knew that he knew his business, he had control of his broadcast, and he was leveling with you. He was an honest man. Walter was unlike any of his uh, competitors. He wasn't a flip like uh, uh, David Brinkley. He wasn't uh, uh, ponderous like Chet Huntley. He wasn't uh, wry like Harry Reasoner. He was uh, something of his own. And uh, those of us who worked with him, as I did for 20 years, worked for him and with him, uh, were filled with pride to have that privilege because uh, he made us feel proud and he made us proud to be television journalists. Uh, we were not known as uh, blow-dried boys or the television boys. We were known as television journalists and that badge all of us still wear. Um, I uh, think we shall never see the likes of him again. One more note, one of Walter Cronkite's very first TV jobs, anchoring the 6 p.m. Saturday evening news on WTOP-TV here in Washington. That station would later become WSA Channel 9. CBS will broadcast a special program on Walter Cronkite Sunday night, 7 p.m., and we'll have more on Walter Cronkite's passing in just eight minutes. Anita's got a one-on-one -on -one with CBS News anchor Katie Couric and her memories of the iconic anchorman. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. Vice President Lyndon Johnson <clears throat> has left the hospital in uh, Dallas, but we do not know uh, to where he has proceeded. Uh, presumably, he will be taking the oath of office shortly and become uh, the 36th President of the United States. Welcome back. Katie Couric has followed in the footsteps of Walter Cronkite as anchor of the CBS Evening News. Tonight, she talked to me about his legacy. When I took this job at CBS News three years ago, he was so gracious and supportive, Anita. He called me and he invited me to go out to dinner with him. And of course, what a thrill that was. And we talked about his career. I remember when he announced that John F. Kennedy had died and told the world and with that very simple gesture of taking off his glasses and then pausing and you see him visibly choked up, I think was uh, an, an unbelievable way of communicating the pain and the shock that the entire nation was feeling. And similarly, when he was so joyful when he was covering the space program and Apollo 11 and said, I'm speechless. And you could see that he was like a, a giddy teenager watching this unfold. I remember all these moments in time, and I think he sort of held our hands and got us through the good times and the bad times as well.